My name is Guillaume Yagatelli. From a young age, I was attracted to spiritual things because I think I had a sense of justice. At one point, I became a born-again Christian. And those who still know me in those days, they said, Guillaume used to have the Bible. I was proud of having my Bible because it was like, laugh at me. But when Jesus is going to come, I'm be the one laughing at you. <laughs> As I was thinking about this, I could realize that something was wrong in this way of thinking, because then everybody else except them was in the right. I decided to, to make a prayer, the Lord's Prayer, which is the one that Christ has taught his disciples. Every morning, I've been making that prayer, asking for guidance from God. One day, I went to visit a friend of mine. And then I saw a book, The Feet in the Night by um, William Seals. It's hard to talk about, talk about the joy that he feels in this moment. It's like, oh, I found something that I've been searching for. This idea that, oh, Catholic, Muslims, and others are, in fact, members of one, one family of God. Being a Baha'i is truly about love, and don't need to put many words, it could fit it. When I was a kid, I used to have a dream of people running. I'd never told it to anybody because I was so scared by this dream. Later on, when the Jesus had happened, in my mind it was that dream that was materializing. Rwanda and Burundi were divided societies, the majority Hutu against the minority Tutsis. In the days of genocide, the radio was encouraging people to kill the cockroaches because Tutsis were then cockroaches that had to be killed. There was a lot of hatred. In all the wars of the past, usually women were spared, but in this one, not the case. Mm. And this, her name was Cecile. She was killed at the same time as my stepmother, my younger sister. My name was Clemens, she was one year older than me. For us to think that we were going to be saved, it would have taken a miracle for this to happen. Of course, I was angry. How would you see those people who did this? How would you take them? Should they be killed? Should they pay for whatever they've done wrong? It was a dilemma. It is like, if I don't join the rebellion, who is then going to defend my, my family? Am I going to leave it to somebody else to defend my own family? Early on, I came to understand that revenge is not a way to help them. They have gone. Whichever way they might have been humiliated, where they are in the next world, but how would I compensate in many ways? My worry now was rather, what do I do? So that somehow, the next world, when we meet, when my father can say, you, but thank you for what you've done. I had decided not to go to war, to work hard, not to have that sense of superiority, to have integrity of what I do, also trying to be selfless. It was, for instance, when Hutus are being killed in Burundi, in the universities, trying to be kind to Hutus, I came to understand that Baha'is were there for peace. We are there for, for unity of the humankind. People have to understand that we are one. What is important is the good thing that we've done. It is the kindness to others, service to others is much more valuable than many other things that we think are available. And for me, this is aligned with what Baha'is, what Baha'u'llah has been teaching us, service to others. The Baha'i faith has brought me to understand that we are one, and to even value that diversity, to get 
closer to the one that looked different from the way I look. And not to see him as an enemy, but rather as a friend. I feel probably that's what I will need to give to those after me. You know, that sense of unity that we are one.